So hi, everyone, and welcome to this video on the multi-period uh, consumption and savings model. So uh, in the past videos, we uh, sort of talked uh, talked about the two-period model. And in this uh, sort of video, we'll uh, generalize it into a more uh, general model, which is the multi-period model. So consider an individual who lives for T periods, right? So uh, it's like that's their total lifespan, so an individual Sort of, if this is their uh, uh their sort of lifeline, so to speak, they live for t total periods. The first r of which, okay, the first r of which, uh, they spend working, and then on each period here, right, on each period here, they receive an income of y t, right. Uh, then um, you know, after that. Okay, the income now here is going to be zero, right? So the income in periods R plus one through T is zero. Uh, the individual has the typical discount factor beta and can save and borrow at a real interest rate R. So we have a fixed uh, borrowing and savings rate. And uh, the individual's optimal budget, uh, optimal behavior is dictated by a standard Euler equation, right? So let's go to letter A. So assume that beta is one and R is zero. You have uh, R total uh, uh, 40 being the age of retirement, right? So that's the periods wherein you get to work. And the time that you uh, die would be the 50th period. That's the end of life. And uh, for period one until 40, you get 15 for each of those periods. And uh, you need to sort of calculate, okay, the individual's consumption in each period, right? In each period, okay. So uh, uh, let's start with this one, okay. So what we have here is uh, uh, if we want to calculate the, the consumption in each period, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the intertemporal intertemporal budget constraint right? and uh, that's given us uh, sum t is equal to one to t ct whoops uh, ct divided by one plus r t minus one is equal to sum t is equal to one until r of y t divided by one plus r t minus one, right? That's what we have there. Okay, so uh, from there, okay, uh, let's just rewrite this to r, okay? So uh, from there, okay, uh, this should be r, sorry. From there, what we have is, this will be, um, if we're gonna notice, okay, notice, the problem tells us that uh, we, just use a standard Euler equation. So recall the Euler equation is just u prime c prime c equal to beta, uh, sorry, u prime c is equal to beta times one plus r, u prime c prime, right? Uh, and uh, this problem tells us that beta is one and r is zero. So this is one, then r is zero, prime c prime, u prime c, so this just means that u prime c is equal to u prime c prime, which implies that c is equal to c prime. And uh, in the, this context, it just means that consumption is just the same throughout time, right? Because of that condition. So that ct there is just actually c bar. t is equal to one. Our capital T is gonna be uh, 50. Then uh, we have CT, right? CT here is going to be uh, just C bar divided by one plus zero, T minus one, equal to sum, T is equal to one until uh, 40, okay? Times YT is just gonna be uh, 15 divided by one plus, plus zero raised to T minus one. Of course, we can simplify this as C bar sum t is equal to zero to 50 because c bar is a constant. So this is gonna be one, right? One divided by one, right? Because one raised to anything is one. 
Then uh, equal to sum, uh, 15 sum t is equal to 1 to 40 of 1. And uh, clearly, this is just 50 c bar is equal to 15 times 40, right? Uh, 15 times 40. And uh, what you get here, if you divide both sides by 50, okay, we get that uh, c bar is equal to 600 over 50, which is 15, uh, which is, sorry, 12, rather, 12, right? So this is the C bar that we have. So uh, uh, this is the C bar that we find. So C bar is equal to 12. Now we can draw a diagram of what's going on, right? We can draw a diagram. Okay, so that's just basically, um, uh, let's start first with uh, consumption. We know consumption is 12, right? So let this uh, consumption be the blue one. The person will consume, of course, for all periods. Okay, so there. Okay, so this is uh, C bar is equal to 12. Then uh, notice the consumer will earn an income of uh, 15 until the retirement age of 40. Okay, so um, this is a uh, YT is equal to 15. Okay, 15 for all one greater than or equal to T R minus one and uh, will receive nothing from 40 onwards. So um, not here, but here. So this is why t is equal to zero, right? Then uh, notice the initial savings will be three, right? The initial savings will be three. Why? Because why? Because 15 minus 12 is three. So say this is period one, then uh, this is three, then if you notice, right, 12 times uh, 30 uh, is going to be some value. And uh, you know that the income is 15 times 30. So uh, if you sort of subtract this one, right, so this is your total income. This is your total consumption so far at 30, per uh, sorry, at 40 periods, rather, not 30, at 40 periods. Then this is just going to be 3 right, times 40, which is going to be 120. So that's going to be the maximum savings. So it's going to look something like this, right? So that's 120, right? So at period 40, you reach maximum savings of 120. Then because you do not earn an income after period 40, you have to dissave, right? So you basically fund yourself based on the savings you accumulated over time. So this one will eventually reach zero at period 50. So that's the consumption and savings diagram, right? So uh, uh, moving on. So assume now that this condition still holds, right? And that uh, we have uh, other values. Well, we can just use our approach from earlier, right? So recall that uh, the intertemporal budget constraint is just this, t equals one to t. CT over uh, 1 plus R T minus 1. C equal to sum T is equal to 1 to R Y T over uh, 1 plus R T minus 1. Okay, then uh, again, because, okay, because beta times 1 plus R is equal to 1, then uh, C1 is equal to T2 is equal to C bar, right? So this is going to be C bar sum t is equal to 1 to t, 1 over uh, 1 plus the rate. In this case, the rate is 3.3. .3, so that's going to be 1.3 t minus 1 is equal to yt here is going to be uh, uh, 30. Sum t is equal to 1. Capital T here is going to be 60. This will be 45, right? And then I have 1 over uh, 1.3 t minus one, right? So if starting from there, I can simplify, right? So um, it's gonna be simple enough. So I use, okay, this approximation that I have here, okay? Okay, this sort of, this not really approximation, but uh, a property of a geometric sum, okay? So notice here, okay, I can rewrite this, 1 to 60 as 1 over 1.3 t 
minus 1. The result won't change because 1 raised to anything is 1. Then uh, this is 30. Sum t is equal to 1 to 45. 1 over 1.3, t minus 1, right? So that doesn't change. Then uh, what happens now is uh, I can uh, move it, no, move it uh, by following this formula, right? So think of this as like um, these components inside as like the x, right? So x here is raised to t minus 1. This x here is raised to t minus 1. The thing inside is raised to t minus 1, right? So this is the same effectively as c bar times... 1 minus 1 over 1.3 raised to, okay, it's going to be raised to this uh, capital T, notice, capital T, which is just the time in the summation, which in this case is 60. So 60, right, divided by 1 minus, okay, 1 over 1.3, okay, equal to 30 times, we do the same thing, 1 minus 1 over 1.3, but this time, the summation's uh, final time is 45 divided by 1 minus 1 over 1.3. And uh, if we solve for C, we get that C bar is going to be 29.9997806. Okay, so that's an example of the multi-period model and the concepts associated with it. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you uh, in the next video. Thank you so much.